love the feeling of floating. Even as a little kid, just floating. I was in some trouble actually. I needed to I needed to focus. I needed to get my head into something. I needed a reason to get out of bed. Cogfi Cottage. Well, if you look around there, you'll see I'm completely surrounded by cogfires. One of my sayings is that a man who is busy with his head and hands stops thinking about himself. I have a dusty space under my house where I do all the cutting and planing and sanding and making a big mess. I've got a fair idea what I'm going to do when I start. And I know from the shape, but really I let it just have its head and let it be the way it wants to be. I grew up in South Auckland. I left school early, became a plumber. I worked all the way through my life, just working and and having a lot of fun, surfing, and met a woman, and had a baby, had a daughter. It's the best thing that I'll ever do. And then it all turned to custard. It did, big time. I couldn't work anymore. Uh, we couldn't afford to, to stay where we were. So we come down to Dunedin. That was the beginning of a very long, dark period actually out here. It was the beginning of the end for my marriage. And I needed to, to go bush. And I knew I had to do that. There's a lot of pain in my past that I could do without it out of. This place is very important. It's got a lovely healing energy about it. It served me so well. It's snowed here and blown and gales and it's, it's been great. Good, nice, sound little house. He lives as a recluse, and not by choice. He's come to know that life very well. And he's come to terms with solitude. We both come from Auckland, and I've been back here a year now. We have a common interest in sailing and, um, and wooden boats. We have a common interest in guitars. played guitar since I was a teenager. It's just become a lifelong passion. There was a connection there that I really valued. And Ian is an interesting um, fish and um, I don't think he ever come away from 
meeting Ian feeling like you've fully understood the man, um, although you've realised that you've been touched by an understanding that um, goes deep uh, and, and wide and, uh, and lifts you up high, lifts me up high every time I see him. Fantastic company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's been a year now since I've seen him and um, yeah, I look forward to going down again and seeing him. My top shed is where I do all the finishing, where I keep all the instruments that I'm working on. I've always liked the guitar. And I remember reading once years ago that Mozart said it's like a mini orchestra. The biggest motivation is to make, make a great instrument. That's what I'm trying to do. When I met Ian, I was the all-black captain, captain of the rugby team, and I was undergoing this period of intense nationalism, and I wanted something made by a New Zealander um, completely out of New Zealand native timbers, and after talking to him, I, he made me realise that a lot of people thought it were really sceptical. They didn't think New Zealand native timbers could actually, or have the um, uh, properties, uh, for, especially for the soundboard, to do it. And I quite, I quite like the idea of sort of proving them wrong, and so did Ian. So it's the first one. I'm left-handed for a start, and you go into a guitar store and the range is really small. And because of my hands through rugby, we managed to open up the frets a little bit and have it a bit wider. It's my most valued possession, I think. I think if the house burnt down, I'd grab it first. The textbooks say that to build a world-class instrument you have to have a spruce top or a cedar top. Here in New Zealand we've got different woods, ancient woods. I needed to treat it you know, like an apprenticeship. I made every mistake possible. Some of them got jumped on and ended up in the fire, so that's alright. He's always experimenting with different materials. He's a real lateral thinker with our ears. Well, I just bumped into Ian by chance, really, about six years ago. Just started having a yak, and he said that he was making guitars. I said, oh, right, and invited him over for a cup of tea. And his guitars have always had a nice sort of organic sound, kind of different. I think it was about a year ago he got the idea of trying out this sympathetic string arrangement. So there's lots of sort of possibilities with it, kind of blending these, these two sets of strings. <laughs> All these musicians have been helping me because I'm not a player, you know, so I needed the feedback. Absolutely important, abs absolutely important, yeah. It's another nice thing about Perkinui. This is a very good place to work. It's a very creative place to work. Nice place to work. Matt Eddy, he's my neighbour. He's a wonderful musician, Matt. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He lives here for the same reasons that I live here. Hey, how are you up to? Oh, not a lot. Got another guitar for you to check out, man. Another nylon? Yeah. Work it. Being out here, we see each other quite a lot and you get on a similar vibe and can relate to each other quite well. And I just love his sense of humour. He's always good for a laugh or just, you know, he's kind of like family. The 
living out here in Perkinoe, it's just like a, a living meditation, you know, throughout your whole day, going about your work and into your craft. I think the crafting of Ian's guitars is, is that zone where he gets into, and that, that's like his healing sort of zone, and his recovery from everything that he's been through. Pain and suffering, I honestly believe, is the great teacher. I got a really nasty illness called ulcerative colitis. I didn't take it seriously at all. Take a few pills and it would go. But it wasn't like that at all. I only had a 50-50 chance of making it. I can remember the trip on the ambulance going over the to Auckland Hospital. It was all kind of blurred. Um, and I knew something was wrong. You know how you know. I woke up with this intense blue light in my head, like just incredible blue. And I've still got that today. It has never left me. It has never left me. To me that was magic, that's what it was. It was something for me to hang on to and I knew that I had to go looking for it, so I did. I went looking for God, yeah, that's what it was. A dear friend of mine, she said, well, why don't you come along to City Yoga? As soon as I went in there, I was instantly struck with a magical feeling. It has a great reverence about it. The way it's lighted, the smell of the incense, beautiful pictures of the saints on the walls. And there was Guramai sitting in a photograph and she's just got this blue light behind her. Exact same blue as what I got on my head. Exact same blue. I ended up in the right place. City yoga has been a huge part of my life. I made it an Indian instrument called a tambora. I used to go to the city yoga center. There was amazing noise going on. And I thought I'd make myself one, which I did. So that's what got me into making instruments. One flowed into the other. I needed to, I needed to focus. I needed something difficult, I needed something that, that had a challenge. I've made around 60 instruments now. If I can do that for another 20 years, I can leave 200 instruments behind. It's pretty good motivation for me. Don't need much more than that, I don't think. found something in the guitar that has extended beyond all of the other things that he was doing because he hasn't looked back. He's taught me how to build a guitar and for that I'll be forever grateful. It's not a day that goes by where, where I don't think of my time in Purukanui. That place is really soothing, good for the soul. Rob, he's helped me big time. He's just been good company, for one thing. He asked me if I'd teach him how to make guitar. So I had to teach him about sharpening chisels and saws and holding things. But he did a pretty good job.
a handmade instrument has got the life of the maker in it. You get a commercially made instrument, they're all made by machine. They're kind of cold and dead, and they, they sound it too, they sound lifeless to me. There's hardly a hand has been laid on them. I've come out of my apprenticeship now, I've done my seven years. I've made quite a quantum leap in the sounds I'm getting out of my instruments. The way they play, the way they feel. It's taken a long time to get to that. Long, long time. My guitar is hide a secret. There's something special in there. And the player will get that out of the instrument. That's a tradition for all luthiers, that they sign under the soundboard. I write on the Mashivaya, which is my faith really. It means I bow to my own true self. I think it puts an energy into the instrument and it puts a part of me into it as well. You don't need to belong to any religion to know the truth. When people are looking for something, you know, I always say to them, you've already got what you're looking for. You just haven't opened the door. It's there. You carry, you've carried it always. You know. For Ian, his way of staying on track, staying in the light, is to use his artistic side. And there's more going on than just putting bits of wood together with glue. There's a magic in the process. You don't know what it's going to be until it's finished. You don't know what it's going to sound like, how it's going to feel. And that's the magic that he's chasing. Most of the, the guitars, they go out the door and I never ever see them again. I don't hear anything. I was destined to be where I am today and to, and to work it all through. I have the awareness now, regardless of what happens, I'll be just fine. I'll be just fine. He believes that this world is much more fantastic than any of us realise. That there's a magic in it, that there's a miracle in it. Just the everyday ordinary is no excuse for thinking that this life is not extraordinary. Long time no see. Pain and suffering really bring some huge changes. It's moulded you the way you are today. Actually, I'll tell you the story about my cup of tea. The first time I woke up in the, in the ICU, I didn't eat or drink anything for about three weeks. At the end of that, I had a cup of tea and a wine biscuit, and um, it was just a glorious moment. I don't think I've ever had such a nice moment. So every time I have a cup of tea now, there's a little bit of that remains. You know. You don't realise how good that is, just something simple like that. Well, I see you've been working hard.
Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a little ripper. Yeah. Oh, man. Nice. It's a little honey, isn't it? Brand new in the, brand new in the world? Yeah, it's a, it's Coral Series guitar. Okay. All 100% New Zealand native. Yeah, yeah. We've got beautiful woods, haven't we? Yeah. He is expressing the fact that he is still very much alive through all of these instruments. It comes through in his passion, in his excitement, and for the spirit of people. That something that he would make would go on to have a life of its own in the, in the hands of another human being. That thrills him, and that's his way of singing. <laughs> 